What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. So, we're moving forward with my prototype build here of my kit. I'm going to walk through a little bit of the stuff I'm going to do to paint these SLS parts. Uh, I've not painted any yet, so I've seen them done. Uh, 110 Rod Shop does uh, their whole semi-truck was all SLS print, and it's apparently very easy to paint. Um, he did one good primer coat, wet sanded it with 600, and painted it black, and it came out like a mirror. So, high hopes this is going to be real good for y'all. Super easy to uh, paint however you want. If you want to do shiny, it's there. Um, first, we got to look at a few things. So, all the parts on the chassis are black. I'm not going to paint the, the transmission mount or the motor plate. Obviously, not really going to see those. Um, luckily, I have some spares of the rear cross members. And uh, I'm going to paint those and leave those on the chassis to keep it together in the meantime. I am going to have to take the grill off to paint that. Uh, I'm not set on the color yet, but I'm going to do like I always do. I'm going to start with a dark base. I've got this uh, dark gray primer. And we're going to do real thick coat on all of this. See what that does. I don't know if it's going to fill in my letters on the cross member or not, where it says RC every day. Um, if not, we can flip it around the other side if it doesn't look right. Um, the grill, it's going to be body color. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to break that up with the mount part versus the grill part itself um, masking off the radiator is going to be a little bit challenging um, the body itself we're just going to get primed first i haven't picked the color um, i did pick this body for my my own build it had a defect on it some of these defects are actually kind of cool that looks like you know just some ripped rocker panel um, i actually broke this one showing people at crawfest how tough it was and it glued back very well and it broke and it not where you think it would it didn't broke along any of the seams or any of the things it actually broke over here and cracked around the side a little bit i glued that up since i got home and it is good to go so yeah this thing has been dirty it's been around a couple things we need to do first so i don't know why on a lot of these prints i'm getting like a little bit of burr along here i've tried to scrape most of it off on the ones that i've sold uh, we're going to take a little exacto knife and clean this up a little bit not a big deal. It comes off real easy. It's not printed to it. It's just like slag left on from the printer. Perfect. There's a little bit of mess in here too. Just cutting it out. That was way easier than I thought. <laughs> Perfect. Another little piece there. Golden. And I think that's about all the prep we need. This one has seen some traveling. It's got a couple scratches and gouges in it, but we're going to weather it anyway, so it doesn't matter. So let me get this paint shook up, get that grill taken off, and we'll get this thing outside and put some paint on. All right, so I got the grill off. I want to touch on something real quick. Um, there is a two different versions of this grill out now. Uh, this is the original one. You see there's no extra support along the bottom. The new one has a little bit of support on that. Um, I switched over after the first 40. Um... Yeah, we had some actually break in like the sandblasting cabinet. These were catching and, and breaking off. Um, I've had two customers who bought them that have broke this and I'm replacing them with these new ones. Um, if you have any issues with this, it, the servo fits just fine. It's just if you get it in there and it's not perfectly lined up in the hole, it can break and push that off. Um, but if anybody has any trouble with that, contact me on Facebook or Instagram and uh, we'll get it taken care of for you. I've got a few extra of these left right now. I'm working on getting some more just in case because yeah it was just a bad design and it was an easy fix uh, after what was it the last round of my god i think like the the 30 unit mark um, was when we noticed some broken the sandblasting cabinet i have a couple that are busted up and um yeah we made a simple little addition down there added some material brought it down a little bit lower it actually looks a little bit better in my opinion too and it makes it a whole lot stronger so just wanted to put that out there if anybody's had issues breaking um, I know I get people ask me if they can buy parts individually. I can't do that yet, but if it's something like that, uh, I'll take care of it. I want you to have a good experience with my products. So, yeah, but I'm going to keep using this one on that on this truck because that, it's working just fine. And uh, I'll save this one for in case somebody needs it. So, like I was talking about painting this, we may 
do two different things with this. We may mask off the bottom, make that look like a chassis part, paint this to be a body part, but for now they're all going to get the flat black paint. And I'm really curious to see how it fills in the lettering here. It may completely fill it up. It may work out just fine. I got a lot of shaking paint cans to do. So huh, out here in the other part of the shop, got this sanded down pretty good. It's dried um, the grill. I'm not gonna do any sanding on it. It's got some imperfections from the dirt bath. Added some nice texture to it actually. So I kinda, it's still a little tacky. I rubbed on it some and uh, yeah, it is what it is. That's how this stuff works, man. You just roll with the punches. So next I'm gonna do a rust red primer. I bounced around the ideas of whether to do a solid color, like an actual paint, not a primer. But I think this feels really good, but you can see a lot of texture. So I don't want to put a color on this and then sand it down and you immediately see all these lines come back out. Even though you can't really fill them, they're still there. So we need another layer of base. So I'm going to do that with this color and we'll do a little bit more aggressive with the wet sanding. Uh, 110 Rod Shop said to do 600 grit. I didn't have any 600 grit. So I used some worn out 320 and some very worn out 800. And then on the large panels, I did a thousand. It's not very worn out. <laughs> I don't have any 600 apparently. I, I looked through my bin a little bit. But we're going to repeat the same process now with this since I get all of the dust and dirt off of it from sitting outside drying. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I really, I'm not sure yet. Masking off this radiator inside of here is going to be a pain in the butt. Hindsight, that probably wasn't. It's a good design. It worked out well, but it's going to be a troublesome as far as painting goes you're gonna get overspray through but i don't know we'll just see what we get There's still a little bit of line in it. Can't really feel it, but that I don't know if it's the humidity here or what. 
you can see it's kind of leaving marks when I touch it. So definitely gonna let this set. The black didn't bother me that much. It, it was still doing kind of the same thing though. So we're gonna let it set overnight. Went ahead and hit these with some red as well. I did not do the inside of the grill. All right, guys, sorry for the background noise. It's hot. I didn't turn the air, air on today. So it's pretty well dry. Still feels a little suspect, but we're going to roll with it. It's not it's drier than it was yesterday when we did the black. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to wet sand, get a little bit of water, and uh, yeah, start with this worn out 320, see what we get. Probably go straight to the 1000 because it is the best piece I have. <laughs> And uh, just see if we can smooth it up a little bit, get a little bit of that black coming through in some places. And uh, I'm probably not going to do all this in high speed. I know I don't like that kind of stuff. The same thing we did earlier. Um, trying to make it as quick as possible. I'm going to hit the cross members a little bit and uh, see if how that looks. Bring out a little black. Same with the grill. And uh, yeah, then we got to decide a color. All right, guys. That took a while. This thing is, uh, this paint is just not. I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's been sitting on the shelf for so long. I did take the time and, and shake it up as good as I can, but it is just not, it's still a little gummy. Um, plus we had all that dirt on here, which actually gave us some kind of cool texture on the grill. Um, I apologize. D designing this grill made it to uh, solve a lot of problems. The servo, shock mount, adding the radiator. It makes it a pain in the butt to sand. So <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, functionally, it's great. Just as far as cosmetic, Getting ready to do the paint. It's kind of a kind of a pain in the butt, but we got it done. Um, we got the cross members done up a little bit. Not anything too crazy. Um, I probably put a little too much primer on here. That's why it took me so long to uh, get it sanded down. But we'll let this set up for a little bit longer. See if I lose that tackiness before we go after the color. I'm not sure yet what color. I'm thinking almost a yellow. I've never done a yellow rat rod. I've got the yellow paint. It's the same can I used to paint my uh, RC4 job blazer all those years ago. It's like, I can't remember what it's called. Summer squash, I think is what it is. So I don't know. I've, I've got some ideas whirling around as far as the theme, but not there yet. So we'll let this set up again for a little bit. And uh, yeah, we got some time to think about color. All right, I'm ready to paint. I'm going with Rustoleum 2X. Summer squash satin, the same color I painted the blazer with back in the day. It looks very faded already and it lends itself to being weathered. Uh, got a little bit more shaking to do on it. I'm gonna start doing really light coats because I don't trust this primer still being a little bit gummy. I don't want to have any major issues, but you never know. Happy accidents, you know? Just like dropping this in the dirt gave us this kind of weird texture. And uh, once we start sanding the colors off of that, who knows what we'll get. But that's the name of the game. I'm going to try to do a couple really light coats. It's still pretty warm. The sun's getting ready to set. So we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. First coat, very light. See, I've got cobwebs in the parts already. Not even a good solid coat. That stuff sprays very thick. It is a satin. Forgot about that part. It's important. Helps with the weathering process. So we'll let this dry for about 15 minutes. And we'll come back and hit it again. All right, while well, waiting on that first coat to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the heads onto our SSD scale engine. Um, again, this is the cheapest alternative for a scale engine for your rig. Not a lot of headers on the market for this. Um, when we get there, I've got a set of the 3D printed headers that I made with RC four wheel drive that are for their V8. They can be made to work with this. That's what I did on the three window coupe. Um, I am painting this the same color. Um, this is my uh, safety green. I love this color. I used this on the very first rat rod I ever built. Um, I actually have the five window coupe is painted that color. I painted the engine and the three window that color and The dash and stuff is that color as well. I think it's gonna go with the yellow once it's all weathered. It'll look nice So got my cow glues my quick set. Uh, I want to paint the heads and everything So we're just gonna glue all that together first and then we'll get the base coat We're not gonna go too far into the engine in this video I want to do this whole separate deal with that so I can show you how to adapt the headers and who knows? We might have some other options for headers by then as well. So, yeah, but that safety green is just a just kind of a cool vintage color. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna put that on this side first. See how it overlaps. Yeah, I'll do it on here. And a little bit heavy on that side. A little bit there and there. 
And I'm just going to squirt this, hold it off the thing here. Squirt that in there. Bada boom. Bada. Bing. Maybe. There it is. All right. That stuff sets up so quick. Oh, so we need to glue that on too. And I've glued my finger to the towel. Gotta wipe off that excess because apparently that stuff's pretty toxic. <laughs> Smells delicious, but do not eat it. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. All right, same thing on the other side. Bring it. All right, that actually dried pretty quick. I wanted you to see up close how terrible it actually looks. If you can see in the light, the texture in that from all the dirt, really, uh, it's gonna work in our advantage when it comes to sanding. You see some lines here from sanding a little too hard. I um, didn't get a very good spray on this side, but that's all okay. Look at the body. See, I didn't get very good over here. It's kind of thin, it's a little thin around the edges. A little thin there, a little bit down the bottom here, some texture up here. Yeah, that's all gonna work out to our advantage. I'm gonna let it set up a little bit more and uh, we're gonna go straight to the thousand grit because I don't think I need to do any other color. Um, I do need to do this while this is still a little tacky. Try and bring out these door edges a little bit. This one got a little bit of stuff in it. It just builds up with paint. I'm not a very steady hand with this blade, but it's, it's staying in that groove pretty well, so working out and across the bottom just oh well that'll add some more patina <laughs> we'll just rub that paint back down flip it over and do the other side this side is very hidden Boop. come on there we go I never noticed the door edges angled in in the front. I went a little past that one, dang it. Oh well. Come on. I'm applying a decent amount of force in here. That one walked sideways for some reason. Make that a little curve. And across the bottom. Boom. Easy as that. We've got our cowl vent up here too, but I think that'll pop out enough on its own with sanding. Just needed to clean those grooves out. So I'm gonna let it sit. It's still a little tacky in places. And then we'll go from there. One. All right, guys, I've got probably about three hours in wet sanding on this thing. I uh, finally got the yellow work down. This paint, I don't know what it's going on with the weather and stuff here. It may just be the humidity, but we've got it looking pretty good. Um, couldn't do much about those print lines. It'll work. The sides look great. Top, I really didn't want the print grain in it, but that's what we got. No way around it unless we wanted to do this step about three more times. So, grill is really hard to sand. Um, looking back, I could have got some tape down in there to block off the radiator. So I didn't get overspray on it, but live and learn. I may find a way to uh, paint that. I did break one of my grill bars, which I'm perfectly fine with because it kind of, you know, fits the look, rat rod. Uh, that was just from getting aggressive sanding. So one thing to be careful with, um, like I mentioned earlier about these grills, this is the old style. So be careful working around these edges. Don't want to break those off, but um, yeah. So I'm not sure yet. I think I think I'm gonna number it. So I started numbering my rat rods uh, with number two back there, obviously. It's got a two on the side. That was the second rat rod I ever built, but it was the first full chassis I ever built. So I think kind of pay homage to that. We're gonna go one on this one. This is the first of the kits. Uh, this is probably the first one completed. I haven't seen anybody quite that far along yet. Saw one person has a Volkswagen sand scorcher body on theirs on my chassis, which looked pretty cool, but they were pretty far along, so they might beat me, but I'm not worried about that. It's not a race. It's not a competition, unless you're in the uh, Reef Team Drivers 
group and they are having a competition. It'll be judged by me and probably some other people at USTE next year. Uh, all the team drivers opportunity to build a rat rod either has to be based off of my kit or um, custom made. But lots of little rules and things with that. It has to set a certain height off the ground. The servo has to be so high off the ground. Level with the, you know, I don't know. And I'm not competing. I'm just building one because this has been my dream come true. So, so yeah, I'm going to get this taped up. I've got a flat white, satin white, and I'm going to get these positioned right about where I want them. And I'm going to tape off everything as best I can. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there start lightly dusting it and uh, then we'll come back and wet sand over it and just kind of knock it down flat and uh, then we'll move on to the next step all right got one mask off I'm just gonna do one side at a time because yeah that way I can see where this one actually is and then I can try to center the other one off of it so I'm gonna go shake some paint lightly do this be right back all right that came out pretty good they're not perfectly even nothing ever is um, it's a little far back on this side Got it about this far back on this side, but it's sitting a little lower. It don't matter. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. This is what I used. Another 2X. This is a satin heirloom white. And that gives you a nice kind of vintage white vibe. I just put it on real thin. And um, yeah, once this dries, I'll come back with a thousand grit. Lightly wet sand, just, just that spot. I want to bring through some of that rust through the white so it doesn't look like it was painted on after the fact. We got a little bit of the same through here. Not quite as aggressive on this side. And, um, yeah, I'm still on the fence. I don't know, I don't know how far I'm going to take this in this video. Um, I need to paint the edge of the window here and, uh, and the back window as well. And, uh, let that dry good before we do the rust streaks, which I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm kind of digging the way it looks like it is, but I don't know. It needs, it needs a little more. The grill really needs a little more. It's got so much damage on it. The cab looks pretty good. Um, I've also got an idea for some bedsides that I don't know how to go about making yet, but that'll be a topic for another video. So yeah, let's get the ball rolling on this. All right, so I'll do a quick wet sand. Try to blend this a little bit. Paper's already pretty dirty. Try to knock down some of those hard edges. The top's going pretty good. Need to do that bottom a little bit more. Gonna blur the lines. There we go. Okay, I got a little too much. <laughs> it's all good though. I think a little bit in the middle. All right, I think that's good. it over.
been a long three days. Didn't come out exactly like I'd hoped. Um, just the way it is. I don't recommend the rust streaks on the uh, Rust-Oleum 2X paint. That stuff, it just eats into. So uh, once I did the rear cross members, I realized that, but I was already committed. Did the grill. Grill came out good. The grill's got a lot of uh, damage to it. It looks, looks pretty accurate. <laughs> Uh, the cab, I couldn't, it just wouldn't, it would set instantly. I try to do one panel at a time. I've got a little too much streak up there on the roof. We may come back with some powders and uh, some of the weathering powders and try to uh, blend it a little bit more. But I dig the color. It doesn't really go with these wheels. I'm not digging these wheels with this now. Um, we've got some stuff in the works with that. Hopefully we can do something a little more period correct. But um, yeah, just my process. Um, doesn't always work. Still, I think it looks pretty cool. I was really excited with how the grill came out. It just looks nasty. It's got such damage, all the texture from dropping it in the dirt. Um, I like that process. I like doing the black, the brown, or the red rust, and then the color. I just wish I had uh, yeah, a little less carried away with the rust streaks, but the grill looks awesome. <laughs> Uh, just a reminder, be gentle putting your servo in. Uh, this one, again, this is the old style grill. Uh, those little servo screw receiver things that stick out can break off. Um, this one, I got so much paint on it, I had to uh, file out the bottom to get the servo back in. So it does fit very precisely. So that's something to take into consideration. Don't sit there and push it from the back. I pushed it a little bit and I could see that it was pushing paint up and peeling the paint off. So I just filed it out a little bit and we're good to go. But I dig it. I think this looks pretty cool. Can't really see the one on the side anymore. It pretty much came straight off. Um, something we could always come back and do again and uh, do it over the rust and try it. So next up for this, like I said, I've got, I've got an idea. I don't have a way to put it into action yet. I want to do some kind of bed sides and I don't want to just do pickup truck beds sides um, so that'll be something we're working on we'll probably do that about the same time we do the wheels because they're still a little ways out i am thinking about adjusting the wheelbase on this one um, i've got the motor i put another coat of paint on it today and uh, it needs to dry for a while um, so it'll be a bit before we get to do that uh, next thing we probably need to do i need to do a video on the firewall showing you how i cut those and mount it with magnets and how we can make a battery tray with sheet metal and it just you know, be easy. You just pull the cab up, pry these out, pop it up, pull the magnets, you know, pull your firewall off the magnets and you have access to your battery. It's a pretty, uh, pretty simple design, but I am thinking about moving the grill back and shorting, shortening the front because this is just going to have a V8. I tried to keep it a little bit versatile in case anybody wanted to throw a big straight six in it like they did in the, in the old number two, but, uh, yeah, we'll tighten that up a little bit. We'll wait till we get the engine on and see how much room we actually have. I think it'll work out perfect though. Everything just kind of seems to keep working out for me with these. So we're gonna rock it like that. And uh, yeah, so I'll we'll wrap this video up. Appreciate you guys watching. And I appreciate everybody that's purchased the kit. I uh, really means a lot. And I look forward to seeing what y'all all do with them. But um, any questions, feel free to comment below. Hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. And uh, yeah, see if I can uh, help you out, get your kit built. Do something cool. Until next time, guys, get out there, do something with the hobby. Keep it scale, and I'll see you in the next video.